Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of the Forgotten History Podcast, where we teach you the history you probably didn't learn in school. Without further ado, let's dig into this next episode. India is one of the world's oldest civilizations, being the birthplace of four of the world's major religions and the site of countless mathematical and scientific advancements. Like all civilizations, it has its ups and downs, but today I'm going to be telling you about the Gupta dynasty, which many, including myself, describe as the quote-unquote golden age of India. The Gupta dynasty was founded around 240 AD by Sri Gupta. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Gupta dynasty originates from somewhere in the Gangetic Plain, in the north of India, either in modern-day Uttar Pradesh or Bengal. For reference, Uttar Pradesh is the part of India that borders Nepal, and Bengal includes Bangladesh and its peripheral regions. Throughout its existence, the Gupta dynasty existed as a largely decentralized state, split into provinces, each with its own rulers. Then, in around 320 AD, Chandragupta I, not to be confused with Chandragupta Maurya, expanded the empire's area significantly via a marriage, because who needs love when you can have political power? After his death in 335, his son, Samudragupta, took over. He was a brilliant tactician and military genius, and was responsible for the empire's greatest increase in territorial size. When he took power, the Guptas only controlled the areas around the Ganges River. By the time of his death, their dominion had spread across northwestern India and vast portions of India's east coast. While he did also conquer many parts of southern India, he saw such expansion to be incompatible with proper governance for the south, as the capital of the empire, Pataliputra, was in the north. Thus, he refused to annex many southern kingdoms, and only collected tributes, because that's just what gigachads like him do. Samudragupta's rule saw investments in education, greatly improving living standards for his citizens. Reigning for 45 years, he died in 380 AD. He was then succeeded by his son Chandragupta II, who expanded Gupta rule to western India and southern Pakistan. Like his predecessors, Chandragupta II was a talented general and a superb statesman. He expanded the navy and gave the Gupta Empire a coast on the Arabian Sea, establishing Tamar Lipta and Sopara as significant port cities. Following his death in 415 AD, Chandragupta II was replaced by Kumaragupta I. It was during this time that Indian civilization began exercising its influence on adjacent nations. In the 5th century, Emperor Kumaragupta established Nalanda University, making it the first residential university in recorded history. The library of Nalanda became a hub for Buddhist thought and scriptures, attracting many scholars from across Asia, particularly China, such as Xuanzang and Yi Jing. Again, as I said in the previous episode, Chinese names are not my forte. Nalanda offered its over 2,000 enrollees many courses in science, astronomy, medicine, logical thought, the arts, religion, and philosophy. Despite the Gupta Empire's successes, it did not last forever. The nation collapsed in 550 AD at the hands of the Huns or a related group. From there on, the Indian subcontinent would remain fractured for several centuries. In spite of its eventual collapse, the Gupta dynasty was responsible for an astounding number of mathematical and scientific progress, such as the modern numeral system, the base 10 decimal system, an algorithm for solving square and cube roots, a rough approximation of pi, early forms of the three basic trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, the idea that the Earth was a sphere and spun on an axis, which, spoiler alert, turned out to be correct, and the idea that the planet's and moon's luminosity was a reflection of the sun's rather than their own light. Many Hindu scriptures and pieces of literature, such as the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, and the Kama Sutra were also written during this time. Given this plethora of accomplishments, it's easy to see why this period is often seen as the height of Indian civilization. So yeah, that's about it for the Gupta dynasty. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. And remember, as Mark Twain once said, 
don't let school get in the way of your education. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next month, or really whenever I decide to upload. Anyways, peace out.